This micro lecture is on integrated biorefineries. This is the lecture where we put it all together, but before we do, I would like you to take a moment and think about seawater. Bioenergy uses a lot of water to grow biomass, and then uses a lot of water to convert that biomass into the things we want. So an important area of development for future biorefineries will be using processes that can take advantage of seawater instead of freshwater. There isn't too much out there right now, but you can be sure that processes that can use seawater are probably going to be more economic and sustainable than the ones that need freshwater. This is something worth thinking about. Please take a moment to review this week's learning objectives. Most bioenergy ideas and businesses use combinations of different conversion processes and then come up with a cool name for it that gets attention. Unfortunately, this is also often very confusing. When someone tells you about a bioenergy conversion process, you need to be able to identify the basic parts. We just spent the last few weeks learning about them, and there are generally only four basic possibilities. Mechanical conversions, thermal conversions, chemical conversions, and biological conversions. Almost every known bioenergy process will fall into one or more of these categories. You will not be responsible for understanding all of the various details of each conversion type, but you will be responsible for developing a basic understanding that allows you to identify them when evaluating bioenergy news and developments. We have just spent the last few weeks learning about these four different pathways, and now we're going to put them together into a biorefinery. First, we learned about mechanical conversions. Please take a moment to remember what these are. Then we learned about thermal conversions. Please take a moment to remember what these are. And then chemical conversions. Please take a moment to remember what these are. And finally, biological conversions. Please take a moment to remember what these are. An integrated biorefinery is just what it says it is. An integrated biorefinery. Integration typically means the use of more than one conversion or step. And a primary goal of integration is the reduction of waste and or the utilization of all waste. The forest products industry and the petroleum industry are excellent examples of integration. They use everything. It may take them hundreds of steps, but they use everything. Biorefinery typically defines a facility that converts biomass into various chemical products. Consider bio to be biomass and refining to mean breaking it down into something and capturing products of interest. Wood pulping, biodiesel production, and anaerobic digesters can all be considered biorefining industries. We will start with wood pulping because it is an existing integrated biorefinery. You have seen this diagram before, and it shows the approximate wood pulping process. Wood pulping integrates chemical conversions, roughly shown inside the blue square, with thermal conversions, roughly shown inside the red square. Now if we take away the process diagram and just think about what we have learned about the conversions, it looks like this. It is really quite simple and much easier to visualize when you think about it like this. So let's try another process. Now we will look at an upcoming style of integrated biorefinery. This diagram shows the approximate biomass to Fischer Tropes diesel process. Biomass to Fischer Tropes integrates thermal conversions, roughly shown inside the red square, with chemical conversions, shown inside the blue square. Now if we take away the process diagram and just think about what we have learned about the conversions, it looks like this. Again, it is really quite simple and much easier to visualize when you think about it like this. So let's try a couple more. You have also seen this diagram before, and it shows the approximate biodiesel process minus the mechanical conversion. Biodiesel integrates biological conversions, roughly shown inside the green square, with chemical conversions, shown inside the blue square. Now if we take away the process diagram and just think about what we have learned about the conversions, it looks like this. Notice how this simple visualization contains a mechanical step that wasn't shown in a highlighted box in the previous slides. That is not because it wasn't necessary, it is because the diagram didn't even bother to show it. 
You have to be able to not only read the diagrams, but also think about them because they often don't tell the whole story. The waste from biodiesel is another aspect of this because for some operations it is a waste and for some it is a product, but it is always there regardless of whether or not it gets used. This diagram shows the approximate traditional cellulosic ethanol process. Cellulosic ethanol integrates chemical conversions roughly shown inside the blue circle with biological conversions shown inside the green circle. Now if we take away the process diagram and just think about what we have learned about the conversions, it looks a lot like this. This simplification is interesting because it makes you realize how complicated cellulosic ethanol can be and how integrated it really is. Once you learn how to visualize and simplify these processes, you can begin comparing them to one another. There are no clear winners or losers based on conversion efficiency. They all end up looking fairly similar depending on the process. In the case of biomass to Fischer-Tropsch diesel, the conversions look a little like this. You get about 90% conversion of your biomass to syngas in your gasifier. About 50% of the syngas produced is carbon monoxide and hydrogen. That means only about 50% of the syngas is useful for synthesis. Then you have a conversion efficiency from syngas to diesel across your catalytic reactor. That conversion efficiency is usually only around 60%. It can be higher, but 60% is pretty average. This leads to an overall mass conversion of about 27%. Not all that high, but then again, not all that bad compared to the other processes. This is a visualization for cellulosic ethanol, which has a slightly lower conversion efficiency than biomass to Fischer-Tropsch diesel. This process takes a hit right away because it only uses cellulose, and most biomass contains only 50% cellulose. The non-cellulose part of the biomass is discarded, and the cellulose is retained, resulting in a conversion loss. After the cellulose is isolated, the conversion of cellulose to sugars is pretty high, at 90-95%. to this high conversion is followed by a poor conversion of sugars to ethanol. This is because around half of the sugars get converted into more microbes and carbon dioxide, and the other half gets converted into ethanol. This leads to an overall mass conversion of around 24%. This is the visualization for biodiesel production. In general, oil seed crops only have about 20% bioweight oil. So in extracting the oil from an oilseed crop, you get about a 20% conversion of your biomass to oil. However, the conversion of oil to biodiesel is fairly high, at 80 to 85%. This leads to an overall mass conversion of around 17%. There are a few general things to remember. Thermal conversions are good for making mixed products in heat. Chemical conversions are good for making high-purity products, and biological conversions are good for producing products that are difficult to synthesize. Remember, thermal is the hammer, chemical is the knife, and biological is the aquarium. We started this lecture talking about seawater, and we're going to wrap up thinking about ocean farming. When you have a chance, please visit the attached links that discuss new efforts in Europe and Australia to build fish farms using offshore oil rig technology and methods. Algae get such high yields per acre because they're grown in water, so they can take advantage of vertical space in a way that terrestrial plants can't. The more vertical space you can take advantage of, the smaller your footprint is and the easier it is to manage things. So learning how to cultivate successfully in deep ocean waters offshore has some interesting aspects that could also be paradigm changes for how the world grows its biomass in the future. It's worth considering.